try and make my main. We're in the northwest, indeed in the shadow of Manchester Airport, Stockport County, playing Wigan, whose hopes of a place at Wembley will be soaring in 45 minutes from now. No puns intended. Wait and see. Anyway, Stockport County lead 1-0 on the night, and it's 2-2, tied perfectly on aggregate. Later scores in the other important games in the Premier League. Middlesbrough still very much in the fight against relegation. They lead 2-0 at Ayrson Park against Tottenham Hotspur. Tommy Wright with two there. Later scores all these. Also big games in Division 1 tonight. Bristol City against Derby County. No goals. Leicester in a playoff spot. Lead South End at Filbert Street. Julian Joachim signed by my guest David Pleat as a young player. South End still with relegation fears. And Oxford United easing their own relegation fears. They lead Peterborough 2-0. Division 2, Swansea 1, Huddersfield 0. Later scores. In Division 3, Barnet in the promotion hunt, being held at home by Berry, no goals. Crew 1, Scunthorpe nil. Scarborough and Shrewsbury tied one apiece. Same story for the bottom club, Torquay, at home to Lincoln and Colchester nil. Northampton nil. Latest and also in Scotland, Airdrie leading Hibs a goal to nil. They need points tonight. Celtic and Falkirk, no goals. Dundee United leading Dundee 2 nil. Motherwell 1, Hearts nil and Partick nil. Aberdeen 2 if Aberdeen win there. Rangers still can't celebrate the championship. Edgley Park then, all set up for this second half. It could be decided in the next 45 minutes. It could go to extra time and penalties. Brian Hamilton and Ian Dark will see it to a conclusion, whatever. Thank you very much indeed, Paul, and to David Pleat there, and all the up-to-date news from around the country on a, another important night for football. No substitutions is the news from Edgley Park at half-time. Beautiful sunset going on in the background. Good crowd packed in here, making lots of noise. And Stockport, one up on the night, 2-2 overall. And Stockport, in their distinctive blue shirts with little red flecks in them, getting us underway at the second half, attacking the goal to your right. The possibility of the penalty shootout, of course, looms up here, just to add even more drama with... Wembley as the cherished prize for the winners. Frame trying to pull those away through is stopped by Robertson. Carstairs got a good left foot. Francis brings it down on his chest sensibly and almost lined up a spectacular left foot volley. Preston, Rotherham on penalties, Scunthorpe, Huddersfield and indeed Stockport in the first leg on their way to what they hope will be destination Wembley. But Stockport fitting for their second final in successive years in this competition. Wembley veterans they are. Two appearances in eight days there last year. They might do again the same thing again this year if they make the promotion playoffs and get to the final two. Drops around a bit dangerously. Ward scurrying away. Doolin gets the foot in for Wigan. And Beaumont keeps it in. Played long for Duffield. Wigan Athletic, who posed increasing problems as the first half went on. Miller. Long in behind aim towards Duffield. Peter Hutton has some news for us. Again, yeah, news from half time. No substitutions, but plenty of work in the treatment table. Wigan's John Robertson has taken three stitches at half time in his head wound. Robertson plays on despite those stitches. For Stockport, Peter Wards has worked on on a hip injury. And perhaps most surprising of all, Kevin Francis has taken a blow to his nose, which for someone six foot seven takes quite a lot of doing. Thanks a lot indeed, Peter. Surprised anyone could reach it. We need a step ladder. It's 
Stockport heading it pretty long at the start of the half. Daly trying to hold it up for Wigan. Good battle between him and Barris. Barris won it that time. Now Daly, is this staying in play? It does, he's got Griffiths in the middle. And arriving fast in the middle there for Wigan was uh, Tankard. And we've got a player down injured, there'll be another stoppage. Uh, just talking about Kevin Francis for a moment, uh, Brian Hamilton, while the uh, injury's treated there. Are you surprised that nobody's ever come in and snapped him up and taken a gamble on him at Premier League or First Division side? Well, I think many clubs have looked at him, and uh, he certainly is a handful uh, wherever he's going to play. Uh, whether he has got that real class to move up and play in the Premier League would be something that uh, some people would have to take a, a big risk on. But uh, again, the size of the fee has been mentioned once or twice, and that would be a question uh, that people might ask. Well, he cost £60,000. Danny Begara there on the bench. Uh, he's really been around to play in the Spanish First Division against the great Real Madrid side of Pushkas and Di Stefano and actually scored against them for Mallorca. Free kick to Wigan. Quite a dangerous position as well. It looks like it's going to be lined up for maybe the left foot of Griffiths, although Langley's there too, and they could maybe switch it for Alan Tankard's left foot. Well, Brian Griffith scored a goal against Huddersfield in one of the previous rounds from exactly that position. He just let his left foot uh, sit back and swing through the ball and it crashed into the top of the net. Well, they're having a little summit conference about who does what here. Now, what plan from the training ground is it going to be? Langley. Long, too long. Gannon got her head to it. Robertson is up there with his Vinnie Jones haircut and eventually hooked away by Lee Todd. Wigan looking for the goal that would inch them back in front. 2-2 two, two overall at the moment. Carstairs away for Stockport. Oh, did well there, Tankard. But Gannon got the foot in furious pace about it well we're going to come out with a bit more purpose in the second half obviously they realize they've got to get a goal to win this match and i think they're playing better now and certainly putting stuckward under all kinds of pressure and they cap the comeback with a goal killing this ball in and uh, knocked away wigan still posing one or two problems to go with it, not like that. Stockport County, incidentally, are the second top scorers in all four divisions behind Newcastle United, so they really know how to bang the goals in when they're on song, which, frankly, they haven't been in recent matches. Well, I think that uh, when you've got something like Francis up front, you're always going to create a problem for other teams, and uh, sometimes you look for goals coming from other places and uh, Kevin Francis maybe dries up they've got to come from other positions in the pitch Doolan did that neatly enough Nugent the youngster no problems for Gannon here Skipper's long header Daly did that intelligently enough and Gannon showing all his experience Taking a bit of a nudge there on his way to try and retrieve the ball. But I think it's, uh, it's just the throw in that's been given. I think this is one of the features of this uh, season. Uh, that cuts over oh, that is, again. Look, uh, yeah. of Robertson's. Well, if the referee sees that, he must stop play because you're not allowed to play at the moment with uh, blood coming out of your head. That's exactly so he, what he's done, actually, Brian. Yeah, he'll be asked to leave the field if they can't stop it. Well, he's already had three stitches, as Peter Hutton was telling us, in that cut. But, uh, 
I don't know, maybe there was a, a header just now that's opened it up again or something. I suppose it might be a little bit delicate and uh, any kind of a knock on the tall is going to certainly bring back the blood. I was saying there early on, Ian, it's a, it's a feature of today's game, really, the, the way the goalkeeper now is being asked to do so many roles. Uh, you saw a lovely little bit of skill from Neil Edwards coming out there, controlling the ball, and when he was put under pressure, he, he was not, uh, the ball was knocked wide to the left back. There's that uh, yeah. challenge by Robertson yeah. on Francis. I don't think it was caused there. No. I think it was just a challenge of two big men, and I think that uh, Kevin Francis is a bit off balance, but I certainly didn't see anything to do with John's head there. Dave Philpott's the Wigan boss. Nervy, horrible moments always. You must know what that feels like in the dugout. This is picked on. Francis is here, and it's a goal for Stockport. Kevin Francis has turned the threat into the reality of a goal on the sheet. And Stockport County lead in this tie now. And they can see the Twin Towers looming. I think it's the wrong way around. Somebody's got the flick on near post, and Francis is far post there for the foot. I suppose Stockport looked for many situations where Francis heads it on, and other people finish, so they'll be pleased with that now. Interestingly, this is Beaumont, I think, who gets the flick on, and Robertson, who'd been getting the treatment, just possibly half asleep a little bit, and Francis getting in behind him. Well, this is where you've got to concentrate so hard when you're playing against somebody like Francis. You've got to watch him all the time, and particularly in that area. The problem, as I said earlier on, was keeping Stockport from dead ball situations, trying to keep them out in the 18-yard line. Well, it was well worked by Stockport, and Kevin Francis scores his 38th goal of the season. We're going to two down on the night. Here's Nugent Pullen! Set for an interesting game now, Ian. We're going to really have to come at them now. They're one goal down. It's a lovely ball inside. The cross is good. Good control by Steve Nugent. Turns very well. Brian Miller does a very good defensive job there, but a good turn by Steve Nugent. Yeah, Miller just did enough. To stop him getting the angle, but Wigan posing a threat. Barris is a big, gigantic defender, and that was meat and drink for him. I think he gave me age where I called him Brand Miller. Give it a score. That's dad, isn't it? Dad. Nah, he'll forgive you for that. Don't worry about that one. Duffield flicks it on towards Francis. Well, I know. Speaking to Dave Philpotts before the game, he was thinking that if Wigan could get through this and get to Wembley, it might just give them the lift they needed for their run-in matches where they really do need to win the lot to get out of the relegation uh, trouble that they're in at the bottom of Division 2. Yeah, they've had a troubled season and uh, obviously it's been compounded at the end. Now, the, rather than just getting points uh, here and there, they've got the win matches and that puts pressure on all kinds of people. Frankly, it doesn't look good for them because three of their remaining games, Wigan, out of four, are away from home, and one of them's at West Brom. Well, when you get in, in Wigan's position, there's no easy games, and certainly West Brom's going to be a very difficult one. Now, meanwhile, Wigan... Oh, Langley caught a bit late there. By Carstairs. And the referee just having a bit of a word with Carstairs about that. No real malice in it. And Ward, who we know has been carrying a bit of an injury, is coming off here. And he's going to be replaced by Paul Williams. Paul R. Williams, as they call him around here, because they've got so many Williams in their squad, but they have to uh, name them almost like cricketers. Well, he's naturally a left-footed player and a left-sided player, so it'll be interesting to see how he does in this right flank. Former Leicester boy. Yeah, that, that is strange. Um. Francis, here's Williams, who's playing on the right at the moment. Onto his favoured left foot. Where's the advantage of that? A left-footed player wide on the right if he can cut inside. But I suppose Danny Begara doesn't want to switch the balance of things too much. Griffiths chasing this one for Wigan. Good, good challenge. Coming in from Miller. Wigan have to commit themselves to attack now. 
They are behind for the first time in this two-legged northern final of the Autoglass Trophy, having been 2 0 up at Springfield Park at one stage. That's an interesting switch, but Danny Bagara has made three changes there. Always Paul Williams is changing now, and uh, Lee Todd's going back to right back. For initially, Carl Sturge came in the middle of the park, Todd went to left back, and Williams came to right back. And that looks to make more sense to me. Williams left back, and Todd right back. So Williams has gone into his more normal position now. Todd. Here he is again. Langley killing out towards Nugent it's a big big problem now for Wigan Athletic Stockport are high on the adrenaline of that goal Beaumont Frame Duffield Francis in the middle, if he can climb across. He was in a bit of space for a moment there as well. Robertson gets it away, Frayne with the header. A poor clearance there by John Robertson. That should have went long and high, and it went near and uh, on the ground, and uh, stuck for it a second chance to get a better goal. Well played by Nugent for Wigan. For Daly. Wigan looking for the goal that could square it up again. Griffiths. <laughs> Daly. Only down for Frayn, who just keeps working and working and working in that Stockport midfield. A little skipper who led them out at Wembley and now can see the possibility of doing it all over again. He's really one of the unsung heroes, David Frayne, him and uh, Peter Ward are the engine room of Stockport County and uh, they make a lot of things happen and they make it very, very difficult for midfield players playing against them. He's a good, honest little professional. Cost uh, what was a record for Stockport when they bought him, Frayne, that's uh, Duffield you're looking at. one of the problems for Wigan as well is that confidence in the camp can't be too high with their perilous league position well that, that is a problem but uh, usually try and convince players that when they're going to take part in another tournament that they, they can get out and get on with it and hopefully change their fortunes certainly no shortage of incentive for them tonight Wigan Athletic Carstairs gets this on we're talking about Wigan looking for the win to lift them for the rain. Of course, Stockport will feel exactly the same. And uh, I know Danny Vergara was saying that they can certainly combine the two, Wembley and a promotion campaign, because they did it last year. Well, the, the, the three points is an amazing uh, feature of modern football, certainly in the English League. And it, uh, it means that almost 90% of the teams are working for something other to go up or avoid relegation. And... Uh, Stockport in the forcing position of being right up at the top up there. Francis flicking this one on. Todd. some news from Peter Hutton just to confirm the situation with Peter Ward he did go off with an injury a hip injury straight into the dressing room they given him 10 minutes at the start of the second half to see if it got any better it didn't so he went off also worth saying down here the atmosphere at pitch level terrific the Stockport fans really generating an enormous amount of noise thanks Peter so you're right up to date with the uh, injury news that was why Ward went off and Peter Hutton gave you the uh, all the gin on that before it actually happened about him carrying the injury. So that's the advantage of us uh, having that man at touchline for you. Here's Williams.
less than half an hour for Wigan to pull this around now. Miller gets this away for Stockford. Francis, amazingly, is beaten in the air by Skipper. It's not happened many times. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't think that happens too many times at all. This is Pilling taking the throw for Wigan. Back in again. Daly in there. Looked like he was doing a bit of pushing, nothing given. And Stockport on the counter. Francis, not a very good ball, frankly. Duffield. Francis again. And Robertson doing well. Not an easy one for the keeper, this one. But uh, Atkins getting out of it with no problems. He played like an old fashioned outside right there. One touch down, two touch the side, and his third one he crossed 40 yards away. Goal kick. Of course, Stockport, when they went to Wembley twice last year, they lost both occasions. They lost to Stoke 1 0 in this competition in the final and to Peterborough 2 1 in the promotion playoff final. So, although it was uh, two great days out for the fans, it was ultimately agonising. Well, I think Danny still talks about that and feels there's an injustice, so we'll be looking forward to get back to try and make amends. covering by Langley here's Miller and he's pulled out of position here if Wigan can counter attack Miller the central defender but they have given it away there's just a moment there where David Miller had pushed forward lost possession and uh, there was a gap behind him but it was quickly closed Griffiths long towards Nugent just a wee bit too long I always think that's a strange thing Ian, when young strikers get the ball in the box like that instead of staying there they run it outside the 18 and make it so much easier for defenders Pushing forward again, they haven't threatened too much so far in this second half. Griffiths gets up well for a little man. I think the quality of crossing in from Wigan has been quite poor when they've got there because Phil Dilly is quite good in the air and that's one of his big strengths and we haven't really seen that from him tonight. Let's have a look at the shots so far, Stockport Eight, Wigan three, those are shots on target. Well, these Stockport players, and uh, eight of them were in the final last year, will almost be getting used to the idea of Wembley. But they're not there yet. Wigan have got other ideas, and here's Skipper for them. Not much cutting edge about Wigan at the moment. No, they are uh, they look a little bit uh, flat after that second goal, so they've got to pick themselves up. Maybe a substitution, maybe just moving a little bit of, around one or two positions because they, they've got players there who are quite adaptable. This is Doolan. Oh, that's a nice turn. And he had to run for the cross on the left foot. Almost to use it, he does to quite good effect in the end through Skipper's legs. Duffield, good layoff. Gannon down the line. Francis again patrolled by Robertson with blood all over his shirt. And Todd Crane, that was neat. Francis again, good idea. Todd breaking through. And that was more thoughtful from Stockport. Well, this is the problem that uh, Wigan are going to have. They're going to throw people forward now. They need this goal, but they're going to leave themselves short at the back. And uh, Stockport have got the pace and Francis to the, the exploit that.
Miller's long throw, Francis knocking it on, but there was uh, he was backing in, so it's a free kick for Wigan. I think that was only three to one, three defenders around him there, so he'll uh, yes, three to one, and just a little nudge against Phil Bailey, still got the flick, but uh, yes, I think the referee was right. Some latest scores coming in for you from other matches being played tonight. Swansea 3, Huddersfield 0 in Division 2. Barnet chasing promotion 1, Berry 0. Important goal. Leicester really in command. 3-0 now against South End. And maybe another chance here for Stockport. Cut out by Appleton. Williams. Pacey little left-sided player. One by Carstairs, who's now tucking in into a more central role with Williams on the pitch. Carstairs now playing in the centre of the midfield, having previously been at left-back. Away by Miller. Wigan Athletic, of course, who only entered the league in 1978 after a 46-year campaign for big league status. And if they go down this year, it'll be their first relegation. Here's Pilling. Langley. Stockport defence at the moment, living quite comfortably. Miller and Barras and Gannon and Williams now at left back all looking quite commanding and in control of things well I think uh, they're looking very comfortable but Wigan really haven't hurt them at all they've got in the positions to put in Kellen crosses and they haven't done it so it's important now they start trying to get uh, some more attacking ideas going Todd apologizes to one or two of his teammates for that ball return to the side has been pretty welcome for Stockport tonight height always useful Tony Barris the number six now Wigan skipper trying to get them going and Miller in there again and towards Nugent and then Barris gets it away and Wigan will have a corner so can they do something from the set piece? A nice time to get a goal now, just uh, to give them a little bit of a lift. All the big men pushing forward. Daly attacking it, but Kevin Francis was back there using his height. And there he is, clearing it. And as far as the Stockport fans are concerned, anywhere will do at the moment. Stockport absolutely intent on getting the ball well away from the danger area any time Wigan threatened and quite honestly they're not threatening that often at the moment well no that was quite a poor corner kick really because Brian Griffiths was very good with that with the uh, game swinger from the right side but the, the last person you hit on the pitch is Kevin Francis in that area you've got to try and avoid hitting him so it has to come either near or very far and he just hit the middle of the goals where Kevin Francis plants himself and Francis has started with Derby County and uh, whatever other managers might think of him, 60,000 quid's a decent deal. Now we're going to have a Wigs Wigan substitution. The bloodied Robertson comes off and it's going to be Chris Sharrett who's introduced to the action. He, quite a fast striker. He used to be with the non-league side Staley Bridge Celtic and he's got goals in the order glass this year against Scunthorpe and against Rotherham. And recently scored at Huddersfield on Easter Monday. Well, they're going to, I think, change their formation a little bit. They're going to maybe play with a flat back four, which will enable uh, them to add one more forward player. So that will take the game to Stockport County and hopefully the Wigan create a chance. The Wigan are in the position now where they've got to gamble. 3 2 down overall in this tie and uh, 2 0 down on the night. 
Langley did well. Tankard. Griffiths. Here's Doolin. Interesting to see whether Doolin lasts the 90 minutes. He first injured his foot back in October, came back for one game in December and broke it again. Bit of a nightmare season for him. He played badly tonight. But Wigan's injury problems are so nightmarish, really, that they've just had to gamble with their selection. Not many choices in the matter. Well, I feel sorry for David Philpott because uh, I, I know how he feels and what he's been through because when you've had a season like that and you get a suspension and people who are not qualified because of... Uh, playing in the tournament before it really does give you a headache and I think he's got every player that he could possibly put put out on the pitch tonight stop court Todd no free kick now here's Sharrett looking for his first touch but Williams is there for a stop court with substitutes in opposition there been injured lately, Sharrett. Haven't they all at Wigan? <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's a trend throughout the club over the last 12 months. It's been very difficult. That'll be an interesting little confrontation between Sharrett and uh, Paul Williams because they're full, both very quick and both very nippy. So we'll see if, uh, who comes out on top there. Skipper kicked that ball away with his left foot. He was uh, reaching down to a knee. But meanwhile, his Todd for stop court. And no foul, says the referee. Not many people in the crowd wearing stop court colours agree with that decision, needless to say. I think from our viewpoint, it did look uh, as if Stephen Appleton was very fortunate there and uh, Lee Todd was brought down in that run. Jarrett and Williams, the confrontation Brian was talking about. Tankard and fast on Duffield, and Kevin Francis has something to say about that, but uh, the piece is quickly made. No, the referee wants a word with Francis, who got himself involved in that completely unnecessarily. He should have been walking away. I think it was uh, one of those situations where the ball was caught him between two or three players and uh, he felt that he had a chance of maybe getting it and with his size and with the size of his feet it, it, it does make him very noticeable looking at that on the playback it just appears that the guy has gone in to try and win the ball and uh, I think he's a bit unfortunate there no bookings Miller's going to take this Skipper does well against Francis in the air. Francis wins this one, though. Dropping down very dangerously and a very important interception by Tankard to deny Chris Beaumont. I think Wigan have did quite well tonight against Kevin Francis considering the size of him and the number of balls he's won him uh, for headers. Uh, there's only been one or two knockdowns which have created a problem, so uh, if they keep doing that, then hopefully they'll keep him out and keep the game quite close. There's the corner count for you, 5-4 in favour of Stockport. They have a corner now. And Barris is in there. We're going to breathe again. Tony Barris getting his head to this one. Yeah, he was left surprisingly free there, and I thought that Andy Pilling should have made more of a, a physical contact because it did uh, give Barris a chance. I think Barris felt that that just might have hit a hand on the way through, but I can't think that it could have been deliberate if it did. And once again, none of the other players made much of it, so uh, play goes on. Andy Pilling.
latest score is Scarborough 1, Shrewsbury 2 in Division 3. And Lincoln are 2-1 up now at Torquay. Colchester 1, Northampton 0. And Leicester 3, Southampton 1. So Southampton have got a goal back in that one. They're in relegation problems down at the bottom. Leicester looking a very, very good bet for the playoffs now. Now Wigan, once again, on their quest for the goal that would level up the tie. Tankard plays it long. Gannon completing the clearance. They have found it very hard to score goals this year, Wigan. It's been one of their big problems. to Daly putting the passes together but going nowhere fast well it's, it's, it's pretty football and it, it really hasn't hurt Stockport at all so it's it's okay for pa uh, with when you pass like that but you've got to have some purpose and uh, we're going to have got to play with a little bit more forward purpose Stockport players with Wembley in sight working feverishly closing Wigan down all the time passes together but they've got to get in among that Stockport defence somewhere along the line can they find the pass the wit to achieve something Griffiths on the turn will it drop for Tankard no because Gannon's there I think Alan Tankard will be a bit disappointed with Brian Griffiths there he tried to turn when he could have led the ball back and Tankard could have had a shot at goal and that's when uh, the game's run against you. You've got to still continue playing simple football. Griffiths nods this on. Almost inside the last ten minutes of the match now. Time is running out for Wigan. A Wembley dream fading. But all hope has not gone yet. There's just a goal in it. Oh dear. Appleton. Almost led in death over there. That's when you're playing and you get and you're pushing forward like that. Young players like Abbott have to concentrate so much because when the ball does come back to them, uh, uh, Wigan have left themselves so bare at the back that a mistake could be very, very expensive. Stockport two, Wigan nil. Peter Ward is now off injured getting the first goal and almost inevitably Kevin Francis the second Danny Bagara saying to me in his office before the game the Stockport manager I bet Francis scores tonight he'd have won the bet wouldn't he his frame Francis has got some space if he plays him and he goes alone well I don't know what uh, the normally excellent frame was thinking about there because he had Francis in acres of space to his right Doolan, Sharrett the substitute, Doolan again, Tankard thinks about the shot, thinks better of it, finds Griffiths, now onto Tankard's left foot, nice move from Wigan, Daly knocking it down, but uh, that was good football from Wigan Athletic. This is what Wigan should have been doing from the start because they are a good, a, a good little side when they get the ball down and pass and play, Stockport County are a very strong physical side. And that is what Stockport want you to do, is be physical with them, because they can compete. They've got the height, they've got the pace, and it's their game, very direct. Wigan need to do this, they need to keep doing it. And hopefully for them, they might open up the game a little bit by scoring a goal. But the passing's good, and that had a little bit of purpose as well, which is uh, very good for them. Stockport fans pretty happy. Notice somebody in the background wearing a Manchester United shirt. How dare he at Stockport County? <laughs> well, I suppose they're the glory side in this area at the moment and uh, in a very strong position to take that premier title. Absolutely. Well, maybe the United fans have come here in support of, uh, of the local side from Division 2. Now, is there going to be another substitution here? If so, it's going to be a debut... Steve O'Brien it is he's only 17 
He's a YTS trainee in his second year, and this is the first time he's ever stepped onto the pitch. Good luck to him. Andy Pilling is the man coming off. Big moment for him. He didn't know he was going to be even named in the squad until today. So he's in here, and what a story it would be if he was to come up with the equaliser. Stressing again, it would be an equaliser if Wigan scored, because it's 3-2 over the two legs to Stockport. Despite that uh, scoreline top left of your picture, that's the way it stands tonight. Now Wigan do have a free kick here, and this might be the best opportunity they have of squaring things up. Langley and Griffiths are there. I think our favourite uh, Brian Griffiths for this, it's, uh, it's fairly central, but he is very good with his left foot from there. Kevin can curl him in as well, but I think it's going to be a Brian Griffiths curler. This could be the big moment for Wigan. Hushed silence among the Stockport fans. Anxiety. Now here it is. Griffiths, can he measure it right? No, he can't. He gets another chance, and the volley was goal-bound, but hit the wall as it advanced. I think the one thing that uh, Stockport had very evident there was Kevin Francis down in the middle of that wall, and it takes some chip to get it over his head and then below the post. It was Frayne who got his head to it. One of the smallest men in One the Stockport One of the smallest team. men, but there was a good challenge out. Stockport did very well there. They challenged the ball and they came out on mass and made it very hard for Wigan to get something else from it. He just didn't have quite enough height on the trajectory, really. But, uh, I think it lacked height and pace from, uh, from there. I think you've got to whip it in. Wigan now beginning to turn the screw a little bit. And well, that was a good forward run. And the save in the end comfortable enough for the goalkeeper from Doolan. It's a good shot, it's a good run from John Doolan, it's nice to see him back playing and this is what he's good at. And he's back in his uh, favourite right back position, so uh, he should give Wigan that little bit of extra balance there. Francis flicking this one on again. I think uh, in the last ten minutes certainly we've seen much more possession from Wigan Athletic, a little bit more purpose and they are giving Stockport a little bit of a worry. Uh, it's a difficult time for Stockport, They're, they've got that goal lead, but uh, they've got to defend as well at the moment. Another Wigan free kick. Under five minutes left. Stockport, under five minutes away from yet another trip to Wembley. It will be their third in the last 12 months. But Wigan still may have something to say about it. Appleton, not the best of free kicks, and he knows it. That was poor. Uh, Stuck quarter right back in the own 18, and that's the last kind of service you want. And the Stockport are quite happy now to just get it anywhere out of the danger area, and uh, you can hardly blame them, really. Barras, and here's Frain. He's under a bit of pressure, and away by Neil Edwards, the goalkeeper. Tankard. Still in play. Frain again. Duffield's made a run for him, so's Francis. Good ball from Frain just to find him there down the line. Francis going alone, and well done, Appleton. That was a great ball from David Frenny. He held it because he knew Steve, uh, Steve France, or Kevin Francis had just gone offside. Lovely weighted pass, and certainly uh, left the back four of Wigan very flat. Three minutes to go. Stockport ahead in the tie. Sixth corner for them. And they're going to try and keep it in the corner, are they? Now we have a delay. For what now? Well, there's a player down injured at the far end of the field. And it's Lee Todd. So while he's being treated, let me tell you about matches to look forward to on Sky Sports with our uh, big diet of football for you, as always. England against Holland, the under-21 international on the Tuesday. That's live from Portsmouth. 
and on Wednesday live from Wembley in the World Cup such a vital game England against Holland it's live only on Sky Sports this is how the injury happened for Todd yeah, it seems something and nothing. Uh, I think him and Alan Tanker just tussled for the ball, and it, it seemed as if he twisted more than anything else, but he appears to be okay now. Here's the corner. Easy for Wigan, but comes out to Gallon. Uh, a bit of a misunderstanding there. He thought Barris was coming short for him. Sharrett. Posse of blue shirts around him. Stockport in uncompromising mood as the seconds tick away and you can see the clock showing 90 seconds remaining Edwards wins it the frustration just showing a little bit from Phil Daly Yeah, I think he was just a little bit late, Phil. It is. It's been a difficult night for him because the crosses haven't come in. And uh, to be fair to the goalkeeper, he did very well. He kept his eye on it and he put two good hands on it and pulled it into his body. A good save. The chant is we're going to Wembley from the Stockport faithful. And for a little side who spent 21 years in the basement till Danny Vergara came along. It will be a return trip, and Francis can make sure of it here. What a handful he is, and, well, between them, Appleton and the goalkeeper, Atkins, did well enough. Well, he is awkward, isn't he, and a ball bouncing like that makes it very difficult for a defender, but uh, between the two of them, they did it. Offside, Francis this time, and another player's gone down injured. I tell you what, if you were a defender, and you knew you were playing Stockport County, you'd hate the idea, wouldn't you, of having to mark him all night? Well, he's, uh, he's a basketball player, really, when you look at him in size. He, he, he's massive, and he, he, he puts himself about, and he's so awkward as well, which makes him a very difficult player to play against, but uh, to his credit, everything he has got, he uses very well, and he makes it very, very difficult for defenders. Appleton was giving his shirt a bit of a tug there, but I think... Francis was putting his weight about too, so it was six of one, half a dozen of the other. That. I think so. For Stephen Appleton, it was a tussle, and he's a young player, so it's a good test for him, and it's something he's going to have to deal with if he's going to progress. Tony Paris is the player struggling for Stockport. And they won't worry too much about the injury stoppage because it just breaks up the rhythm again. Middlesbrough lead 3-0, by the way, against Spurs. Latest score. Francis gets his away to a huge cheer from the Stockport fans. Wigan, 1985 winners of this competition when it was the Freight Rover Trophy, are now staring defeat right in the face. They came here with the lead, but Stockport came back to level. And Kevin Francis's goal looks like it's going to be the match winner. Maybe one last chance for Wigan. Referee, Robbie Hart, who refereed Stockport in last year's final and uh, disallowed a goal rather controversially, looks at his watch. The crowd beseeching him to blow it, or most of them anyway, the Stockport fans. Here's O'Brien, the youngster. Hasn't had much of a chance so far to settle. Difficult for him. There's the clock. Getting on now towards two minutes. Well, Stockport will just Stop want it. this ball deep into Wigan territory, and Wigan have got to get the ball as far up the field as they possibly can and try and put them under pressure. That ball has just left the ground via Jim Gannon's boot. To be fair to Stockport, they have defended the lead once they've got it well. Well, they've defended stoutly, and uh, Wigan really in the last 15, 20 minutes have put a few passes together and also look, looked as if they could break Stockport down. It's a pity that just didn't happen earlier on. Now, what will Stockport manage this time? Because Wigan are going to try the long throw. It's the aerial bombardment. It's flicked on. And away 
to safety by Beaumont. The length of the pitch, Robbie Hart takes another look at his watch. He may have had five looks at his watch. Absolute agony for the Stockport fans who just want to hear what will be a symphony of a final whistle as far as they're concerned. And that was a poor kick from Nigel because he needed to get the ball deep into Stockport territory and he kicked it out. Skipper plays it long. Daly attacks it. Wigan give them credit. They're pressing to the last. And still no whistle. Tankard. Griffiths. Tankard. He's got to hit it long, really. But no. Skipper looking for the one-two. And again, out of danger. A long, long look at the watch this time from Robbie Hart. Here's Langley. Here's Daly. And this time the whistle goes. And Stockport County are going back to Wembley. They were there twice last season. There's a crowd invasion. And tell anybody here that you shouldn't play the finals of competitions like the Autoglass Trophy at Wembley. They are going potty here. Delirious. Danny Begara, the manager, Uruguayan-born, has to rush for cover to his little underground den beneath the Edgeley Park stands. And you'd think that they'd won the European Cup the European Cup, Winners' Cup, the World Cup, all rolled into one. They're all heroes here now. Stockport County win 2-0 on the night, 3-2 overall. And deliriously joyous fans. Well, it's quite an achievement, isn't it? Stockport County, how about that? Three well, Wembley appearances in a year, it's yeah, going to be. Yeah, it's marvellous. I mean, to be honest with you, no matter what level you play at, if you get to Wembley and represent your club there, then it's a, it's a terrific achievement. And for teams like Stockport and Wigan, it's extra revenue, of course, but it gives players, as somebody said earlier on, the opportunity of playing on the big stage. And some of them will be very disappointed tonight. I've lost semi-finals. I know how they'll be sitting in there feeling that they've just missed out in Wembley. But I've also had the elation of going there. So it'll be uh, two extremes in a dressing room. Well, commiserations to the uh, the Wigan boys and their fans, of course. But uh, I don't know, maybe some of them are going there to support the rugby league team. They could well be. But as for Stockport, these uh, fans have stuck by the club a little hardcore. It's usually only about 5,000. And they stuck through the club thick and thin, and they're getting the reward of it. And amid these scenes here, somewhere Peter Hutton's going to try and get an interview. Well, uh, it's going to be quite a struggle. But meanwhile, why don't we see what David Pleat made of that with Paul Dempsey back in the studio. Thanks very much to Brian Hamilton and to Ian Dark. Indeed, as Ian says, as the euphoria at Edgley Park continues, we'll be speaking to David Fleet in just a minute or two and wrapping up an evening of cup and league football. So stay with Sky. game and Peter Hutton at Edgley Park is talking to one of the men who's putting them back on the road to Wembley. Thanks Paul, yes with me up there somewhere is Kevin Francis. Kevin I'm sure you're chuffed with what's happened, it was important getting back to Wembley wasn't it? Yeah, um, all the lads are saying to each other that we left something there last year which is a bit of our pride and a bit of spirit so hopefully this year we're going to go back light into the cup back out with us. It was a real battle though out there. Yeah we knew it was going to be a hard game like from all the times we met in the league. When we went up to their place we didn't do ourselves any justice at all. So we owed it to ourselves and to the fans like to turn it around down the edge of the park. Let's have a look at your goal because you can't stop scoring, can you? It's, that's what I'm there to do. I mean, um, I don't make, I'm not there to make people happy. I'm there to upset defenders. It was a good flip from Chrissy, normally it's the other way around. And in them situations, just put it in the corner and hope that it goes in. Yeah, Chris Bowman's touch important, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was surprising that Chrissy actually headed it because he's not, he's not normally known for his heading. I don't think he buys much shampoo. But um, he got the touch light and I was in the right place and I'm just happy like that we're going to Wembley. How, how, how much did it hurt last year when you went to Wembley, both in the playoffs and in the Autoglass final? You, you must really want to win there now. Yeah, the lads were still low like months, months into the season when we come back last year, like this, this term. Um, you can't really explain how much it hurts like to go there twice and come away with nothing. So we're there again now. Hopefully we'll get there now again in the playoffs and I'm going to put it all right. Great. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Back to you, Paul. No problem. Thanks very much to Kevin Francis with Peter Hutton.
This is the story of the game then in uh, statistical terms. Stockport winners pretty much on all counts, David Pleat. Yes, I mean, uh, Stockport deserved to win. I thought the game was a bit fragmented, a bit frenetic, but there's a semi-final and there's a lot at stake. And you saw the pride there that um, uh, the big centre forward, I think he comes from Birmingham by mm. listening to him, that Mr Francis was talking about. I think they deserve to win. Just let's review the goals quickly, shall we? Stockport in front comfortably early on. They wanted an early goal and yeah. this is what they got. I mean, they were, they were always fearful of uh, Francis in the air and then Gannon and uh, some erratic play there. And it was a very, very fine curved chip that... Um, Peter Ward. Peter Ward placed in there. Um, there he is, Francis making his presence felt in the box. Yeah, never got real clear headers from corners, uh, did Stockport. Wigan did the best to clear the box and to keep Francis away. But there was a case where the goalkeeper's come out and he's got caught off his line. Now the winner, David. Yeah, wicked in swinging free kick. Just the slightest touch by Beaumont and Francis just gets on the other side of Pilling. I have to say, it's poor defensive play. A, they were sitting too deep, and B, they didn't attack the ball. There you see them uh, go right back towards the goalkeeper as it's flicked, and the poor goalkeeper's there, left clutching thin air. Francis again, another goal. Happy for your buddy, Danny? I'm delighted for Danny, and no doubt he'll pop down for a cup of tea on his way to Wembley, and um, I suppose we'll have to give him one. He'll, um, <laughs> he'll talk all night long, but um, I'm delighted for him and his family. He's, he's doing really well. And um, he's a very good technical and tactical coach, you know, and sometimes I'm not quite sure if the way they play is the way deep down he would love to play if he had better tact uh, technical players. I wonder who he's going to play when he gets there. Just to remind you, this is the draw. Stockport safely through to Wembley then for the Autoglass Trophy final. Exeter City playing Port Vale tomorrow night. Vale leading from the first leg, two goals to one. So John Rudge's team against Alan Balls. Rudge's probably just the favourite, but that's going to be a difficult game for Vale, I would suggest. Wonderful football to come over the next week or so on Sky Sports. Next Tuesday, 7 p.m., the England-Holland Under-21 International is the European Championship game and the triangular club tournament from White Hart Lane. Spurs versus Inter Milan versus Real Madrid. Highlights of some of the best in Europe, not to say the world. And then the big stuff on Wednesday night, World Cup Group 2, it's the big one from Wembley. England versus Holland and also news of Norway against Turkey in the same group as England on that night but of course all the build up and the game live itself England versus Holland before we leave you very briefly in the FA Premier League the latest score from Ayrson Park Middlesbrough 3 Tottenham Hotspur nil Tommy Wright with 2 and Paul Wilkinson as Middlesbrough to continue to fight for their Premier League future and we'll keep you up to date football news to follow don't forget and every step of the way towards the uh, end of the season. David Pleat, good luck for, for you for the rest of the season. Leicester City want to stay in Division 1. I hope for your sake that they do do that. A bleak end of season for Wigan, I'm afraid, but lots still for Stockport County to play for. At their level of the game, one of the most respected sides anywhere. Two Wembley trips last season. They're going to go back to try to make it third time lucky this time round. From us all, good night for now. A lot of people say, well, this is the one that matters. In association with Sega, England's World Cup campaign...